my name is Veronisa Mescua, and I will be presenting on gender fluidity, sexuality, and the emergence of the third gender called becoming Mushe. Let's begin. In ancient Mesoamerica, there existed a manifestation of gender fluidity. Gender fluidity is by definition the spectrum of gender identities that are not exclusively male or female, but it exists outside of this gender binary. This duality was particularly important for Mesoamerican culture. It established everything about their cosmovision, their ideologies, their religion, their traditions, their rituals, their sexual identity. It really structured everything. This same duality is oftentimes expressed in mixed gender deities, in the structure of gender-based roles, as well as Mesoamerican sexuality. In the relationship of the co-essences, written by Alfredo Lopez Austin, a famous Mexican historian who's written extensively about Aztec worldview and Mesoamerican religion, he talks about the divine duality and the complementary notion to both the place of creation and the place of death. This divine duality is exercised both in male and female forms. An Aztec gendered mixed god would be Omete Otl. Omete Otl is representative of both what is male and female and has those two forms of Omete Kutli and Omesiwato. This divine duality provides an equilibrium to both the heavens and the underworld. And it is really important for the structure of gender-based roles. In ancient Aztec myth, we learn about Tzipatli, a reptilian god that gets ripped in half by the navel. The top portion of Sipatli becomes the heavens, the sky, and the bottom portion of Sipatli becomes the earth and the underworld. The top portion is always considered male, and the bottom portion is always considered female. The bottom portion represents fertility, regeneration, and growth. So these two complementary aspects in Aztec cosmovision create and structure gender-based roles for both males and females. In the Isthmus of Tehuantepec, located in the state of Oaxaca, Mexico, the Zapotec descendants take great pride in gender equity that was still salvageable from ancient Zapotec civilization. Their kinship system is still considered matrifocal. The woman is known to be the head of the household and she and the Mushas control the markets and all the trading. The Mushas of Oaxaca are biological males who manifest feminine identities, both in dress and attire, and they're not considered transsexual, nor are they wanting to be women. This is the really important part of the duality because in gender fluidity, um, they don't consider themselves exclusively male or female. They're both. So whenever you actually ask a Mushe what a Mushe is, they will answer back. Mushe is not male or female, but it's what's in between. It's that in between that makes this so powerful and so interesting because they manifest both male and female traits. The third gender known as Mushes challenge all concepts of Western gender binary. Alfredo Mirande, author of Hombres Mujeres, a professor in sociology and ethnic studies in the University of California states that um, it isn't about their sexual category, their sexual identity, um, or their sexuality. It's about retaining the Zapotec customs, traditions, and language. This is really important because um, this unconventional notion of gender fluidity still exists and Mushes aren't considered males or females. They're considered both and they're well respected and accepted in Oaxaca community. Many of them take on really high status jobs and combat controversial topics such as sex ed, um, safe sex, um, AIDS campaigns, as well as battling domestic violence. Mushes take a really strong role in Oaxaca community. They are known to be strong like women because only women 
can oversee and manage the markets in Oaxaca because it is such a tough role that only women can do it. And this is the most beautiful and amazing thing that exists today because something that is gender fluid, that um, is unconventional and is well respected and accepted is something that we don't hear very much um, in this modern day. But it is really important for us to be able to not place them in a certain category with a certain label. We're, we're known to um, try to put people in individual categories in which they fit. But um, for Mucius specifically, they're trying to challenge every aspect and concept of sexuality. And they claim that um, they can be both and that they live as both and that they're respected and accepted as both. No es ser gay, no es ser homosexual, no es ser eh, otro rol, no es ser mujer. Ser mujer es ser mujer. 